Once upon a time, in a small village near Ayetoro town, where Alake is now the ruler of the village, she became the queen after the king signed the seal with his blood out of desperation. She has shown the seal to the chief priest and in return, the chief priest crowned Alake the queen of the village. When night came, Alake retired into the king's chamber, excited. Both a village and all the neighboring villages celebrated a success. So she smiled at herself and said, So I am now the queen, from a concubine to a queen. But Alake's joy was cut short when Mojoi, the leader of the king's concubines, suddenly appeared unto her. So this is your plan, Mojoi said to Alake. I really applaud you. You are indeed clever. You killed the man you claim you love with all your heart. Then you sit on his throne. No. No, Alake said quickly, the king betrayed me. The king asked Awotono to kill me. I only acted fast by killing the king first. Wow, Mojoin said, what a sweet narration, Alake. You pointed the gun at the king and you killed him. Abomination. Don't get this twisted, replied Alake. Aren't you all his concubines planning to let him die when you all refuse to carry the sacred sacrifice of long life for the king? Alake, Mojoin called. You indeed acted naive. You indeed acted like a good person. But you are a green snake under the green grass. Now tell me. So out of the kindness of your heart, you carried the sacrifice for the king. Then what? You killed him afterward. He tried to kill me, said Alake. But here you are, replied Mojoi, alive. You are not just alive, but you are now the queen. That throne doesn't belong to you. I'm sure you know that. <laughs> I'm carrying the king's child in my womb. Alake said quickly. Alake? Called Mojoi. Prince Adiolu is the heir to the throne. And you know that. But, Alake interrupted. But, Prince Adiolu has been turned into a shadow. Even the king sent him out of the village. How can a shadow, a ghost, rule this village? Ah, Mojoi. Think of it now. But Mojoi ignored Alake. I'm giving you seven days, Alake. Step down as the queen or else. Mojoi clapped three times and disappeared from Alake's chamber. Alake panicked. She looked around and also noticed that the gun beside her bed is gone. The gun that was fortified and given to her to kill anything or anyone. The same gun she used to kill the king. Immediately, Alake rushed to the chief priest. Oluawu, the gun is gone. Mojui took it. She threatened me. She gave me seven days to step down as the queen or else. The chief priest breathed deeply. Hmm. I told you that whatsoever anyone so, he or she shall reap. You shouldn't have let the king's betrayer towards you stain your good heart. But the deed has been done. When Alake realized that the chief priest has no solution to her problem, she left the chief priest's house. After Alake left, someone else knocked on the door. To the chief priest's surprise, is Queen Ayoka, the legal wife to the king, and she has the gun with her. I smell trouble, 
said the chief priest to Queen Ayoka. Oh, Paul is well, Ayaoba. How dare you, Uluawo? How dare you approve Alake as the queen? She killed the king. Abomination, Ayoka said. Ayaoba replied the chief priest. My hands were tied. Alake has the seal signed with the king's blood. Oluawo. This king's concubine turned my son, Prince Adiolu, into a ghost, into a strange being. And now, Alake is pregnant with the king's child. Don't you smell something fishy? said Ayoka. Ayoka continued, The king's concubines are the problem of this village. I am the queen, the king's rightful wife. I should sit on the throne, not Alake. Oluawo, I'm giving you seven days. Alake must leave the throne or else. Ayaka said and walked away. The next morning, Mojoyin gathered all the king's concubines and they rallied round the village shouting, Alake must go. How can someone who killed the king become the ruler of this village? Abomination! When the villagers heard the story, they all turned against Alake, shouting, Abomination! When Queen Ayoka saw that the villagers now despise Alake as their ruler, Ayoka invited Mojoi into her chamber in the middle of the night. Mojoi, why are you doing all this? asked Ayoka. What did you stand to benefit from all this? You want Prince Adiolu to become the king, isn't it? Ayoka did not give Mojoin the chance to answer the question before she said, I know that Prince Adiolu is your son. I remember you carried him in your womb. You gave birth to him and gave him to me so as to cover my shame and barrenness. But I don't need him again, especially now that the king is dead. I don't need a son to secure my stand with the king. I shall become the ruler of this village and you, Mojoin, must die. Ayaba, please, said Mojoin. Ayoka pointed the gun at Mojoin and that is how Mojoin passed away. She ordered a servant to take Mojoin's body and the gun and drop them in Alake's room. When the news of Mojoin's death spread the next day, Alake was accused of the murder. Mojoin asked Alake to step down as the ruler of the village, gossiped one of the villagers to the other, so that the rightful heir can sit on the throne. And in return, Alake killed Mojoin with the same gun she used to kill the king. Alake is such a wicked woman, replied the other villager. The remaining king's concubines became very scared. Ha! Ah, Mojoin is dead. What will happen to us? So they all ran away from the village. And when the chief priest heard all that has happened and how he is now in charge of passing death, sentence on Alake, he packed his belongings that very night and left the village. So Alake was framed for the death of Mojoi and Queen Ayoka passed the judgment and Alake was executed. Ayoka became the ruler of the village, but her time was not rosy for the villagers. She made life difficult for the villagers. Thus, every year, the villagers were secretly carried sacrifice to the river, appealing that Prince Adiolu should return back to his normal self and come back to the village to sit on the throne. Years passed, and the day Moreni Keiji was going to the river to fetch water, she stepped on a trap and shouted for help. Surprisingly, Prince Adiolu heard a cry for help, and that was how the cause on Prince Adiolu was broken. 
Though he stayed with Moreni Keji and her mother, Amokwe, in their hut in the forest, but every day he yearned to return back to his village. So one fateful evening, he sat under the tree with Moreni Keji's mother, Amokwe, and as he shares his thoughts with Amokwe, she also agreed with him. Truly, your place is in the palace, replied Amokwe. And that is how the three of them journeyed back to the village. And when the villagers saw Prince Adiolu, they all danced in celebration. Finally, the gods have answered our cries. The villagers said to one another, But when Queen Ayoka set her eyes on him, her heart was filled with joy and she broke down in tears. Though Mojoyi may have gave birth to Prince Adiolu, but she was the one who nurtured him right from birth till adulthood as if Prince Adiolu is a child. She hugged Prince Adiolu. I never knew I would still set my two eyes on you. She ordered the servant to kill goats and to celebrate the return of Prince Adiolu. And for the first time in many years, Ayoka was very happy. But when she slept that night, she did not wake up again. Some said she poisoned herself so that Prince Adiolu can become the king, while some said the girls took her away so that Prince Adiolu can become the king. Well, either way, Prince Adiolu becomes the king and Mureni Keji becomes his wife and the queen. In order for the king to have a long life and prosperity, Mureni Keji volunteered to always carry the sacred sacrifice of long life for her husband, the king. Thus, the king changed the tradition that only the king's wife is permitted to carry the sacred sacrifice of long life for the king. So Morani Keji inherited the gun, the gun that was fortified, and with the gun, she will successfully carry the sacred sacrifice of long life for the king. Both the king and Morani Keji lived happily and the villagers enjoyed prosperity. The end.